This is called an audio visualizer. Why? Because it visualizes the audio. Okay, well what does that even mean? Well, you know what an audio meter is. It shows the volume of the audio in the current moment. Imagine that, but more complicated. Instead of just the average volume, it shows the volume of every pitch and tone, also known as the frequencies. In this video, we're going to be making UI for an audio visualizer, using a variety of math functions and techniques, and making something that actually works. I'm going to be showing you how to make this inside of Roblox. Hopefully you can learn some programming too. You should watch this whole tutorial first and then go back to follow along. Let's get started. The first thing you want to do is create a screen GUI and start a GUI. Rename it as you wish. Now create a frame inside this screen GUI. This will be our container for the audio bars. Position it to the center of the screen by changing the anchor point and the position like this. Change the size to fit the width of the screen and then make it 50 pixels tall. Let's make the container invisible by setting the background transparency to 1. Now we're going to make a frame inside our container. This will be the audio bar. Let's also rename the container and the bar so we know what they are. Set the size of the bar like this or similar. Now as you can see, this bar is not positioned correctly. Let's use a UI list layout to get them in the center, but not overlapping. In the properties, the padding will set the distance between all the bars, the fill direction will set the fill direction of the bars, and the alignment properties will align it to your liking. Here we want them both to be center. I'm going to style the bar using a UI corner and a UI stroke, just to make it look a little bit better. You don't have to do this. Now as you can see, the UI list layout is working because all the bars are aligned to the center but not overlapping. Now we're going to add an audio player, not a sound. If you don't see the audio player when searching it up, that means it's not enabled for you. We need to set this up. Open the file menu on the top left and then press beta features. Scroll down until you find new audio API and make sure it's checked. If it's not here, then it's out of beta and it should be working for you already. Press save to save your changes and then it'll prompt you to restart studio, so just press restart. What we've just enabled is called the audio wiring update, at least that's what I like to call it. This adds a wire, audio player, audio chorus, audio compressor, and a bunch of other different tools. Insert the audio player in the screen GUI. Now let's change some of the audio player settings. Look for a song in the toolbox. You can pick whatever you like. Copy the asset ID and then put it in the asset ID property. Make sure it starts with rbx asset id colon slash slash. When you set both looping and is playing to true, you should be able to hear your song. But you don't, because you need to wire it to one of your speakers. To do that, we'll insert an audio device output to the audio player. Create a wire in the audio player, and then set the source instance to the player, which you can consider the input of the wire, and the target instance to the output, which would be the output of the wire. Now we're going to add a special audio class called Audio Analyzer. This will be responsible for getting the spectrum at the current time position. Create a new wire from the audio player to the analyzer. Now there's two wires coming out of the audio player. Rename both the wires so we know what they are. Finally, we can start scripting. Create a local script inside of the screen GUI. First things first, create a variable called container, which will be set to the container for all the audio bars in the screen GUI. Next, create a variable called bar, which will be set to the bar in the container. This will act as a template, so we need to set its parent to nil. We'll be cloning the bar later. Let's also get the audio player. Make a variable called audio player and set it to the audio player inside of the screen GUI. We also want to play the song immediately, so call the play method of the audio player after you make the variable. 
Also, make sure that the is playing property is false of the auto player, as well as the time position being zero. Let's see what we have so far it works. It should just play the audio. Now we're going to add three more variables. The bars variable determines how many audio bars are on screen at once. The start and end frequency variables will decide which frequencies of the song are shown to the user. Using these variables, add a for loop that iterates from the start frequency to the end frequency. The third value of the for loop is the increment. Set the increment to this formula, which will evenly space the frequencies depending on how many bars we're showing. Inside the for loop, you should print the frequency for debugging purposes. Let's see what these values are in the output. Now create a new variable called bar in lowercase, which will be cloning the template. Each of these bars will be representing each frequency. Here I've set the layout order of each bar to the frequency. This will ensure that they're in the correct order. I'm also setting the name of the bar to the frequency. Now let's actually start updating all these bars. Create a variable called rs, which will be set to the service, run service. Now we're going to connect to either heartbeat or render stepped. You can choose which one's best for you, but heartbeat runs 60 times per second and render steps runs per frame. We're going to iterate all the children of the container because we know that all the bars are there. But we need to make sure that the bar is actually a bar because that UI list layout is there. Create a variable called spectrum and set it to the return of the audio analyzer's get spectrum method. This function will return the list of frequencies at the current time position. Now I'll print the spectrum value so we can see what kind of numbers we're going to deal with. It looks like these numbers are very small, which is intentional, but the amount of numbers probably isn't. I was expecting it to go to 24,000, but it's only at 512. This is not even beta after all. That's okay, they'll probably fix it some other time. Now let's actually start coding the size of these bars. The bars seem to be moving slightly, but they're not, they don't look good right now. Let's try modifying the code a bit. Where we set the size, we're going to be lerping the size from one size to another so that it's smooth. Lerp stands for linear interpolation, which you can think of as transitioning. The second argument of the lerp function is the amount we're going to transition. This value is between 0 and 1. Here I'm going to be setting it to 1 or the delta time, whichever is the lower one. Delta time is the amount of time it took to render the previous frame. The reason we don't want this value to go over 1 is so it doesn't overshoot if you lag too much. Also, I forgot to mention, set the bar size to be this. This is so that the lerping begins transitioning at zero. Oh, it still doesn't work? You know what, let me just skip all the debugging. You don't want to watch all that stuff, it's too boring. Looks a little bit better now. We could definitely work with this. We just have to make it a little bit bigger. I'm a programmer, math is not my strong point, you have, you have to choose a different formula or something. Looks good, now we can add some color effects. Just so you don't miss it, I changed the markers, star frequency, and end frequency variables just now. To get the audio bars to have a rainbow effect, set the color using from HSV, which stands for hue, saturation, and value. As you can see, changing the hue changes the position in a rainbow from 0 to 1. Therefore, if we set the hue according to the current second in time, we can get a rainbow effect. Now it works, but as it stands right now, the whole bar changes color. Let's make it seem like a rainbow is passing through all the bars. First, I multiply the current second in time by this value to make it slower. Then, I offset it by another value to change the second in time for that bar specifically. 
Here I inserted a formula that will get the position the bar is in relative to all the other ones. Now let's see how it looks like. Beautiful. One last touch I want to do is I want the rainbow to move the opposite direction. So to do that, put a minus sign behind the tick. This will flip the second. If you have something similar to this, then congratulations, you've made an audio visualizer. It doesn't have to look exactly the same. Being unique is great anyways. If you have any questions, just throw them in the comment section and somebody smart will answer it. Have fun!